Hi, today I want to talk about XML parsing in Lucy. Normally you have some code like this. You first have the path to XML file or you have it as a string. In my case that's a very simple one. I have here a catalog of different CDs with the artist and the country it com he comes from and so on. And then I, with help of XML parse, I do parse that XML and then I have a, a document object model and then I can read that read that object and get my data out of it. That is called the document object model we get in that case. It has disadvantages. First of all, it is slow because it first reads the complete XML into memory and provides it as a very complex structure. It's also memory intensive for the same reason and it's extremely complicated to use. There is JDOM, that is DOM specialized for Java, but first of all, it's not that much easier. It's still memory intensive and most important, it's no longer maintained. So that project is dead for a long time. In Java, there's also another way to handle XML. That is with help of SOX, simple API for XML. This is event driven. That means it does not store anything into memory persistent. It simply takes you along the ride. So you have listeners that can listen to, to everything that happens in that XML. And then you decide if you want to store that information and how you store that information. So the parse itself stores nothing at all. This is much faster than DOM because it only does what you want it to do. It doesn't do anything without you decide it. It is also more memory efficient for the same reason. It's still complicated to use, but in my opinion, it's easier. The implementation in Lucy simply allows you to define a component as a listener. That component then needs various functions that listen to certain event inside the XML. First is start document, so that is called when it starts parsing the document. Then start element, that is called every time it goes into a new tag. In that case, you get the name of the tag and all its attributes. Then there's a function body that is called every time it goes into the body of a tag. Then in that case, you get the content of the body. And of course, there's end element that is called every time you reach the end of a tag. And again, end document when you reach the end of the document. And error is called in case there is an error occurred while executing the parser. Here, a simple example to start. First, we get the pass to the same XML file we used before. And we pass that to a component we did implement and we call the function execute the Dakota component. And that component looks like this. First, you see we have the init method and here we get the XML file we passed in here. We simply store that and then execute this call. We come to that method later. But you see we have here the listener method. So start element is called every time we enter a new tag. So in that case, it checks if the tag name is CD. You see, we have groups of CDs here. If we enter a CD tag, it creates a new struct named CD and it sets a flag that we are inside a CD. Otherwise, it simply stores the name it gets in current name. So we have that name inside the component. Then after we enter the tag, then we'll, body will follow. So when we get the body, we know, okay, we have the current name. If we have a current name, we store that into the struct we got here. So CD, current name, and the content. That is, for example, you see when we are inside CD, we have title, and we have artist, country, price, and so on. So we store that all, everything in that CD struct. Then... When we reach the end tag or an end tag, we check if it, the end tag is CD. So we are here. We set the flag to false that we are no longer in CD. And we append the CD struct we did to an array CDs that holds all CDs we have. And we also reset current name. So that way we're storing all CDs we get from the XML. Now we can look into the execute method, initialize CDs and CD and inside and all these variables we use. And it 
creates a XML event parse. That's a Java class. And when we init that class, we pass in all the listener methods, the start document, start element, body end element, all the listener methods. And we call start and pass the XML file. Then this event parser will call our functions here. So that's already everything. We get the result from execute and make simply a dump from that result. So when we execute that, you see we get the array of destructs we filled. We only have in memory our data in the structure we wanted to have. Now we improve our example a little bit. We add here a struct, a filter, where we define, okay, we only want to have uh, CDs from 1995. So, and we have, you see, that's XML catalog two. And we go inside that component. You see in the execute method, we now get that filter. And here we, we only store that filter. And when we enter a CD, we first say, okay, we don't want to remove that. We set the default frag, not removing the CD. Then inside the body, we check the filter and we have if we have we have a match we say okay we remove that cd if in case we have a we have no match sorry and so at the end of element when we fill the cds to the array we check if we have a, a remove cd in that case we don't add it to the to the array that way we can very simple filter out our, do our own filter to filter out stuff when we execute that you see, we only get the uh, CDs from 1995. Of course, what you do inside this XML color catalog is up to you. In our case, we, we simply create a struct. We then fill to an array. But you can also, instead of filling that to an array, you can store it here in a database or already store it here in the database. You can do whatever you like. You can write a file or create an email or whatever you like. So you don't have to wait until parsing the XML is done. You can do while parsing the XML. So let's say you have the, the XML catalog has millions of CDs. So you can go along and parse element by element and store it and forget it. So you don't have in memory all this million of, of CDs. So you can parse a, a, a huge XML and it will never load the complete XML file into memory and of course never the complete data as a structure into memory if you don't want it to do. I hope this was helpful to you. Have a good one.